everyone, Princess Cerissa here with my Let's Play of Final Fantasy V for Job Fiesta. In the last episode, we had just entered the Wash Tower, and I ended up stealing a bunch of knives from these wyverns. It increased my attack power by nine, so that'll be good for this uh, upcoming boss. But before we fight the boss, we need to fight some uh, random enemies that uh, we can encounter in this thing that we haven't found yet. So first here is the Passa de Sol. Uh, he's that little stingray-looking enemy in the lower left. So, nothing too uh, important. So, uh, most of the enemies here are weak to lightning, so if you have a black mage in your party, the bolt spell will be really, really effective against uh, taking these guys out. So, ooh, we got a potion out of it. We'll be running through a lot of potions in the boss battle coming up. So, we're gonna hang out on this floor, and that's where we'll meet the rest of these enemies. Including the, uh, Rickard Mage over there. <laughs> I wonder if he's, uh, like a... A throwback to Final Fantasy 2. There was the Dragoon Rickard, uh, there. Uh, but, obviously that Dragoon was a physical fighter, not a mage, but... Eh, maybe the name, they just took it back from it, so... One of the interesting things about, uh... The Ice Soldiers there that were, uh... Were, uh, present, uh, they have a, uh... A pretty good steal, uh, a mithril sword. We can steal that, get some good money out of it. So, mithril will be the next type of uh, upgrade equipment. Uh, it's better than anything you can get like right now in shops. Right now the shops are selling like, iron equipment. Uh, mithril is like the next step up. So, we'll be able to get that in uh, the next town coming up. But to be able to get a sword for free uh, early, hey, take advantage of it. We'll just be selling it because. None of our characters can use swords, but... Free money is always good money. Mm-hmm. Can use your money to, to spend it on rats. Mm-hmm. And in, in, uh... Well, not in the game, but in, in the real world. Mm-hmm. And if any of y'all have any, uh, extra monies out there, uh, maybe you can donate some of it to, uh... Tiny Toes Rat Rescue. Mm-hmm. There's the final last enemy that we wanted to meet there, the Elf Toad. Mm -hmm. If you have a Blue Mage, and we will eventually uh, get a Blue Mage later on after we get the Earth Crystal, even though it's a Wind Crystal job. Uh, what, uh, you can use get the Frog Song off of them. That's a Blue Magic spell that turns enemies into frogs. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we'll have to uh, eventually get that when we get Blue Mages. So yeah, the way I just did this, uh, like his fiesta was, uh, because there's only, uh, there's six wind crystal jobs, and four earth crystal jobs, and five for the fire and the water, I, I just did, like, one where I, uh, picked two wind crystal jobs out, um, and that just happened to be for this, uh, fiesta, uh, playthrough, so. Yep, don't get any standard earth crystal jobs in this playthrough, but that's okay. Have to, that'll just give you encouragement to watch the other ones in the future for all the rest of the Earth Crystal jobs. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to head up this way and yeah, and speaking of crystals, we have a crystal room right here. And there's that strange knight we were told that went in here. They're controlling you, aren't they? Well, I want you to destroy the crystal. And there's that, uh, Garula. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, here it comes. But this one is not, uh, timid and tame. And he will hurt us. And he will. So this is the Garula. Uh, he has a high potion steal. So we want to try to maybe steal that uh, high potion off of him. Uh, if we can. But uh, if not, well, we didn't lose anything by trying to steal. So Garula here, uh, he just basically attacks uh, initially. But after you do 400 uh, hit points worth of damage to him... He goes into his second form, so I kept track of the damage I'm doing, um, and when I'm getting ready to get close to that second form, uh, I moved all my characters into the back row. In the back row, they'll take uh, half damage, so it'll be easier to uh, keep up with healing, and it'll be important to keep up with healing, because once uh, Garula gets to uh, 800 hit points or takes that 400 points of damage, his AI script changes, and that he starts to counter-attack uh, any damage that you do to him. Uh, he counters uh, twice 
and he can counter with uh, a special attack, that rush attack, a fight, or nothing. So he picks um, two out of those three uh, to hit you with, in addition to his normal uh, regular fight command. So uh, the specialty attack, that uh, rush, it inflicts the sap status on your characters so that their hit points will gradually drain. And they'll gradually drain for about uh, 100 extra hit points before it uh, stops that status effect uh, goes away. So yeah, see, uh, so sometimes you get lucky and uh, he'll only counter with the fight and then a nothing command. Uh, if you get really unlucky, he'll do like specialty twice. Uh, so it's kind of a little luck based thing. But uh, for us, it's not so much luck because we're back in the uh, back row. So we'll be able to outspeed the damage he does. Especially if uh, he um, if he misses, like Tiny Toe there dodges his attack with that Elf Cape. That 33% chance to dodge with the Elf Cape will be really, really helpful uh, in this fight. Assuming he keeps going for a Tiny Toe. But... So basically, uh, you basically want to try to keep your characters uh, above the uh, 100 hit point mark to keep them safe for, in case they uh, end up eating two of uh, Garula's uh, counterattacks when being damaged. So, like I said, this is similar to the Forza fight where we move to the back row so that we can uh, outspeed the damage that uh, Garula does. And as long as we have a bunch of potions, which is why we maxed out on potions, uh, we should be safe, so. Now, if things get really, really bad, say that uh, he gets a massive hit on a character, and then uh, he counters, uh, you, uh, he hits you, uh, and then you hit him before you get a chance to heal, and he hits you with the same character with two counters and get really, really low, uh, that's when you can throw a high potion uh, or an elixir to max your uh, hit points up. That's why I farm some of those elixirs and high potions before this fight, but uh, I got lucky here that uh, he didn't really gang up on uh, any character, and I was able to uh, just use potions to uh, keep up with the healing. Thanks, and all we gotta do is just keep above the 100 hit points, and uh, we should be fine. So if that means we have to slow down on our offense a little bit, that's okay. Better to be safe than sorry. So we did try to steal earlier. Gallop stole just a regular potion, so it would have been nice to get that high potion. But like I said, we'll end up getting a guaranteed high potion drop once we uh, defeat him for for good. So too bad he can't be like the ones out in the wild that just sit there and let you hit him for nothing. But oh well, then the game will be too easy. So. I can't wait when I, uh, for the next, uh, job fiesta, I have a knight, and the knight has a very interesting way to, uh, to deal with this guy, so. That's one of the fun things about, uh, the fiestas, you get to try new strategies out, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the knight has a pretty interesting one how to deal with this guy. Mm-hmm. But you'll have to wait until next year to, to do that. Mm-hmm. I got a who am I uh, playing for uh, next year? Let me look at my my notes here. I have it all written down. Ooh, small angel rescue. Mm -hmm. Once again, they uh, help rescue small little critters. Mm -hmm. We got the knight, red mage, bard, and samurai. Mm, that should be a interesting uh, little uh, group. Very uh, physically uh, oriented again. Than being the knight and the samurai, heavy physical classes. Uh, Red Mage uses low magic uh, up to level 3 from both white and black magic schools. Uh, and the bard is an interesting little support class. They sing. Mm -hmm. The bard has an interesting way how to deal with Shinrayu, one of the super bosses. Mm -hmm. Once again, like I said, you'll have to wait. Mm-hmm. Sounds like there's gonna be a lot of interesting strategies for the next year's fiesta. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna have to wait for that too. Although probably by that time, Daddy will have new princess rats, and one of them will have to take over. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so maybe he'll name uh, one of the princesses Lana. Hey, and finally beat um Garula there. So woohoo! There's the crystal. It's still intact. That's good. Look, the crystal. Uh oh. Something bad's gonna happen. Ooh, it burst again! And it bursts into six little crystals. And there's a crystal on the upper left that we can't get to le yet. But that's a special job class. It's the mine job class. Uh, it's kind of like the freelancer class. It inherits the abilities of other classes, and you can set what you want, but... Uh, Lord Galuff. Huh? That knight knows him. Me? You know who I am? Lord Galuff. Couldn't protect it. Forgive. Uh-oh. Hey, stay with me, man. Please, tell me who I am. Fire crystal. Protect. Yeah, that knight got up and he blocked our way out. But remember, like, uh, the wind crystal, uh, there'll be an exit out of here, uh, behind the crystal, uh, altar. Or the amplification machine. So. The crystal fragments are glowing. Are they gonna give us their power, too? Yes, they will. And we get the Time Mage job. That was in the first job fiesta I had. The Mystic. They cast spells and you hit them with their sword. Berserker, that's what we'll be, class we'll be using. Red Mage, we get that in, a la in next year's class. And the Summoner, I had that last year. So once you pick up those five crystals, uh, Tower starts to sink. What's going on? The Tower is sinking. Uh-oh. Hope our uh, dragon gets away. And we got a little exit there. The knight, he's uh, passed away, so we can't rescue him. We can't get that crystal either. We can't escape through the back door there, the secret exit, I guess. And that tower and that peninsula sink down into the water along with us. Oh no! Ah! Oh no! Hope we can all swim. Well, we did so we can swim in the uh, ship graveyard, but uh, that was probably calm water because it was inside the boat. This uh, water has currents and stuff, and the land and the uh, tower probably pulling down with suction, so. Hey, it's Sildra! She's back! Sildra, you're alive! And she's eating us! Uh oh! I hope she don't like, chew us up and swallow us. That wouldn't be good. Mm -mm. Just keep us, keep us in your mouth, Sildra. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not tasty. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm, tasty stuff. I like bananas. Bananas are one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. And cookies. Mm -hmm. Chocolate chip cookies. Sildra! Sildra, you used the last of your strength to save us. Oh no, don't say that. What are you saying, Sildra? You can't die, I won't let you. Oh no. Don't worry, Sildra will be back later on. So, I don't want you all feeling sad, minions. Mm -mm. Sildra will be back. Sildra, thank you. Lena's like a Disney princess. She can talk with animals. Sildra... <laughs> All right. Well, Sildra has saved us, but she's gone off somewhere. She can't stay with us. Not that we have a ship that she can pull us with anyway. But we do have a different animal companion that, uh, heal you. And looks like it, uh, flew away when the thing sank. And hey, there's like an opening in the meteor now. Hmm. Well, before we investigate that meteor, let's hop on our uh, wind drake, and we'll fly back to uh, Walsh and heal up and uh, talk with the king. See what he has to say. See if he's okay. See if him and his guards escaped. Remember, because he was uh, attacked by the uh, Garula. We can also change our classes now, so... Well... We can't input any uh, ability um, into the Berserker, because all the Berserker do is Berserks. He just attacks. So, uh, there's no point in putting an ability on the Berserker that has an a exclamation point in front of it, because that's an ability that you input the command to. You can give the Berserker uh, uh, 
a non, um, uh, like a passive ability. So, but an, a, an ability that you would use in battle, yeah, no point in putting that one of them on them, so. Want to buy some iron equipment? We only need to buy one iron, um, helm, though, because remember we got that free mithril helm, uh, back on the North Mountain where we got the Windrake. So, we're gonna give, uh, give the Berserkers their axes. Give them a shield as well. Now, one of the things is, when you do the optimal equipment guy kind of thing, it only takes into consideration, uh, pure defensive power. It doesn't consider, like, special abilities that a relic may inflict. So that's why we want to take the glasses off and, uh, put back on the elf cape. Because even though the glasses give better defense, the elf cape, that one, uh, that 33% chance to one-third chance to dodge is much better than the slight defense that the glasses give. So... We can sell a bunch of this equipment that we have. I turned uh, both of the uh, male characters into the Berserkers because they're slightly stronger than the females, and the females are more agile. And knives uh, have the agility um, bonus to them, uh, so the the girls will get uh, better damage out of their knives, and uh, they'll act first. Uh, so better to have them in the thief job class. And then have the the men in the uh, the Berserker class, which relies mainly on strength. So I'm gonna use some of that money that we got from uh, the steals and the uh, old equipment that we sold to uh, buy some more items. We uh, lost a lot of Phoenix Downs, and we went and ran into that Jackanapes down um, in the basement of Walt's Castle to get the Elf Cape. So we want to restock on them, restock on some tents, and fill up our potions, because we did u lose, l use and lose a lot of them, so. Let's head back to uh, Castle Walsh. We found a wounded soldier from Karnak and brought him back into the palace. He's resting in the barracks. That Karnak soldier crawled out a hole in the meteorite to the north. I can't believe it, the water crystal shattered. Okay, that guy, this guy just says the same thing, that not to take the treasure downstairs. Nothing over there. The king was mauled by Garula. His majesty is resting in his quarters. And the quarters are over here to the right. Let's just go up and talk with the king, see what he has to say, see if he's getting better. We would appreciate if you would do as the king asks. Princess Lena, now you've found your Windrake, perhaps you should turn to Tycoon. Everyone must be worried sick. Princess, you are completely right. Cough, cough. King Walsh, don't push yourself. You must hurry to Karnak. The fire crystal is being amplified in a machine similar to ours. It seems that a meteorite has fallen outside of Karnak as well. There's no time to lose. Well, that uh, meteorite we know fell a while ago, because Karnak is to the west of Tool. And remember, someone in Tool said that a meteorite also fell to the west of here. That's the Karnak meteor. How are we going to get to the Karnak meteor? There's a mountain range in the way. Remember, the Windrake can't fly over mountains. Well, let's talk with that... Uh, now the crystal's gone, the water started getting dirtier. Let's talk with that soldier from Karnak. Uh, maybe he can help. I was investigating a meteorite that fell near Karnak when I was suddenly warped here. Hey, where is here anyway? Where'd Karnak Castle go? We can tell he's from a different castle, because his armor is like a different color. See, these uh, soldiers, their armor is uh, dark blue. And that Karnak uh, soldier, his armor was like a lighter blue. So that's why you know that he's different. So let's hop on our Wind Drake and head up to the Meteorite. And now we can actually um, head into the Meteorite and investigate it. So we can land on that dirt there. And head on in. What's the inside of the Meteorite look like? Hmm. It's just a small little uh, room. And it looks like one of those warp points that was uh, in the wind, crisp, uh, the wind Shrine. Tiny Toe, did he make it? D did he warp? We won't know until we try. Oh, she he, she hops in the warp. Now, Farris, she does too. And that leaves just you, Lord Galuff. This this all looks really familiar. And the soldier, he knew me. Hmm. Well, we're slowly unraveling um, Galuff's past. Apparently, he's a lord kind of lord? I don't know. A baron? A king? A duke? I don't know. I'm not good with lord titles and what they mean. All I know is that I'm a princess and princesses are awesome. Mm -hmm. 
And you get to be a princess if you have, if you have a crown. Mm-hmm. There's also a little bit of a, a little, uh, test that you have to do to be a princess. Mm -hmm. But I passed it with flying colors. Mm-hmm. Yep. I know Princess Celestia, she developed that, uh, little test. Mm -hmm. And she gave it to Luna. And every, uh, girl ratty that my daddy gets from now on has to undergo that test. And if they do, they earn the crown. Mm-hmm. But, uh, we've earned ourselves, uh, passageway to a new area. What's in this new area? Find out next episode. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.